Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is up 43. We get the Nasdaq up 22. S&P's up 7.5. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the first hour. Don't forget, folks, Steve does an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. And no matter where you're listening, remember that all you have to do to get some great video, audio, go to YouTube, put TFNN in that search bar, Bottom line, right on your phone each and every day. Some great program, eight, 9 o'clock in the morning to 5 at night. Steve also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, the way you get this newsletter, folks, come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go right under Featured Content. You're going to see Mastering Probability. I'm Mr. Steve Rhodes. You hit subscribe. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. Six months at $695, which is $199 savings. A year for $11.95, which is at $593 savings. All of those folks come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you have everything to gain, nothing to lose. Steve Rhodes, what's going on, brother? Well, I was thinking about you yesterday, and and the reason is I, I was uh, I'm planning a trip to uh, Japan. Oh, sweet! And, and as and as, of course, as part of that uh, becomes the, uh, the the flight arrangements. And I haven't been to Japan for a number of years, and, and thought it's time to go back. I, I love it over there. Yeah. And uh, but but the reason I was thinking about you as I was starting to take a look at flights, I know, was imagining the jet lag that you must have because I've taken that trip direct, um, you know, a number of times. Uh, and so so how are you doing? How's the jet lag? It. You know, I was lucky. I think um, it's a long ride. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but I got back. I, I, they, I left on a Sunday night. So picture this. I left China, and I was out of the factory town. So I actually left China Eastern Standard Time at 6 o'clock Sunday night and got back and Tuesday at 11 in the morning. But listen, I went home, fell asleep, yes. woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning, took my dog for a walk, come back at 4 Went back to sleep, woke up at 6, and I felt good. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah. What, what, what's your big takeaway, would you say? Your top two or three things? Uh, would they, you take they can build anything. And they, the, sad, you know, the, the smog is a big deal. There's no doubt about that. They'll get that okay. straightened out. But they can build anything, man. And they, they're efficient. I mean, if you get, people get a chance, go there, folks. I mean, they took 700 million people out of poverty in, what, 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's pretty intense. It's real intense, man. I mean, yeah. you, you can't you can't you cannot comprehend how many buildings there are, high rises, and they're filled. I I drove three and a half hours, and they never stopped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, imagine this: many many years ago, probably fifteen twenty years ago, when I was over there doing a, a theme park um, deal, uh, I caught up with a bunch of guys, a, a few guys that were from Australia that were doing a uh, hot air balloon. Uh, kind of a, a, a ride, so to speak, at this theme park. Basically, they were, it was going to be on a tethered line, you know, to take people up. But uh, I became friends with these guys, and and we took their hot air balloon uh, over southern China. And of course, we we had a we had a chase car, and but we're flying over first. A lot of there's a lot of barren land out there as well. Yes. But then you come over these large cities. That large cities, you know, five to ten million people, and uh, and then the folks would be looking up, seeing, you know, it's not like there's hot air balloons flying over no. China. No. Uh, that often, and we landed uh, uh, because we were we could see that we were coming across a river where we couldn't see where the chase car would get us, so we didn't want to be stuck. And uh, so we landed in this field. It was a weekend, too. And uh, we, we landed in this, uh, uh, like, a, a high school field. Uh, and there were some guys, Chinese guys, that were playing basketball. And so, nope, they didn't speak English. We didn't speak Chinese. But we got a pickup basketball game going while we were waiting That's for awesome, the uh, chase car, you know, to come uh, pick us up. But let me give uh, you and folks kind of a take on really what I see inside the market, things to be aware of. And the first thing, Tom, is the seasonal cycle. So we're about to end April. And this chart here shows a seasonal cycle over the last 87 years for the Dow and shows that there's a topping period. The old sell in May 
really uh, the the typical average high that forms inside the Dow. Two different time periods during this, we'll call it the unfavorable seasonal cycle. The first is towards the middle or third week in May, May 19th. Um, then there is, and then it's typically moved down into the uh, late June time frame, a nice bounce into about the third week in July, and then the, mar the move down into the uh, fall time frame, typically in the middle of October. So we should just be aware that that seasonal cycle is uh, present. And, and what we do is we use that to c take a look for other patterns that could be completing around that time period to line up with the, the cycle. So if we take a look at the Dow, and as I heard you talk about uh, the Dow, it remains in a consolidation. As great as the markets have been, the Dow is still in a consolidation. That seasonal cycle is what we were looking at uh, for the Dow. And for me, a real breakout of this consolidation doesn't occur to until 27302. Now, clearly, as you pointed out, the January high of uh, 2018, 26,616, that's another level. But the reason I come up with the 27,302 in order for a real breakout to occur, Tom, is by taking a look at the Dow's horizontal trading ranges, which is what we have up on the screen right now. And these are the month, this is a monthly chart. These are the monthly horizontal trading ranges. And interestingly enough for me, we've got a nice little rising trend line between the January 2018 and the September 2018 highs that that really coincides with the next horizontal trading range uh, resistance or boundary line at 27302. So that's how I come up with the 27302. For me, a real breakout would not occur until the Dow were to close above that. But in order for the Dow to do that, it's going to need to overcome, and this is the Dow Equity Futures contract, folks, and this is the daily time frame. There is a topping pattern that completed last week, and this is a three drive to a top. When I say complete, for me, patterns complete. The way, Tom, the market talks, walks, and squawks for me is at the end of a pattern, I, 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 in this case here, this would be a bearish pattern, I would see a bearish reversal candle. That's the way that the buyers and sellers are communicating to me what their intention is. And so if the Dow is going to make its way higher, it's going to need to overcome that three drive to a top pattern, the high from last, I think it was Thursday or Wednesday. And if I take a look at whether that can happen, I look at the Dow Equity Futures contract. And right now I have on my screen here the daily resistance level that was formed by our TAS market profiles. And that's 26,613. So in order for the Dow to really um, move above a, a level that says, hey, we're, we're entering this time period here of the seasonal cycle, won't get caught up into the sell in May, I can see some real resistance. In summary, the Dow is in its consolidation pattern on a monthly time frame it's got a uh, it's got a topping pattern on the daily time frame and there's some resistance that is built in real quickly here for folks the s p yes it's at new all-time highs but for me a breakout's not going to occur until price closes over three thousand it's really using the same set of tools tom you'll see the horizontal trading range at 29.93 here for the s p for its monthly time frame but we've also got that rising trend line so that's the the range 29.92 to 3000 for me is where the real breakout inside the s p on a daily basis for the es mini uh, this is in wave number seven. That's letter G on my chart. We've also got an A to B equals CD pattern. If a bearish reversal candle shows up there, that gives us an indication of the top. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> it's, it's iffy whether that's really going to happen because price is above Tom daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly TAS market profiles. Yeah, for I love the it. 500. Listen, man, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. You bet. Thanks, Thanks Tom. Steve. Have a great day. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.